Low-level lakes, shallow streams, and dried-up creeks are common sites throughout Hennepin County. It all follows one historic month. July 2021 turned out to be the Earth's hottest month in nearly 150 years of record-keeping. Hennepin County is currently in a severe drought, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor, with the northwest portion teetering into extreme drought. Sonia Goins takes us to Plymouth to show us how the drought is impacting city workers and residents. All we're trying to do is keep things alive. It's not fall yet, but already some trees are turning colors. Very, very shocking. I mean, August is always dry, but I've never seen it quite this bad. The wilting leaves and parched landscape are because of our continued dry conditions. Because we're not getting any precipitation for us to help us. Some areas of the states have received less than a half an inch of rain in the month of August. And even when it rains, it hasn't been enough rain to really make an impact. Plymouth Forester Paul Buck says workers are having to do something they haven't done in decades to try to keep plants and trees alive. In a normal summer, we would maybe water probably every third or fourth week maybe, and this year we have been watering every day all summer. The drought is also impacting lake levels. Experts say water is about a foot below normal. And take a look at this outlet. Normally, Medicine Lake would be feeding into Bassett Creek, but look at it. It's barely a trickle. I've never seen it this dry before. People aren't able to get their boats out right now at the landing. It's it's dry across the whole lake. And look at the increase in shoreline off East Medicine Lake Beach. These children look like they're walking on water where normally they should be able to swim. Very, very shocking. When I grew up here, I used to come out here and fly fish, and this is as low as I've ever seen it. It's been a long time since we've had it really this bad where the moisture just hasn't been here. We've gotten, you know, three tenths of an inch. That's that's not enough. And then it doesn't rain for two more weeks. That's tough. In Plymouth, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Another big story we're following this week. A recommendation is expected for vaccinated individuals to get a third dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Federal health officials are waiting on full FDA approval before offering booster shots. The expected announcement follows a surge in cases, including breakthrough cases, in which vaccinated individuals test positive for COVID. A couple of key points. Booster shots would be recommended eight months after your second dose. And it's recommended that you stick with the same branded dose as your first two shots. Organizers call it amazing generosity. They've reached the fundraising goal for a statue of Barway Collins at Crystal's Becker Park. The 10 year old boy lived near Becker Park and went missing in 2015. The boy's father admitted to killing his son and is now serving time in prison. Former council member, city council member Jeff Kolb and his wife Erin launched a fundraising drive in July hoping to raise $15,000 for a statue to honor Barway. They hope to have the statue installed late next summer. A new fast food prototype going up in Brooklyn Park as everyone talking. We got a chance to check in with the people behind the new Taco Bell Defy. It really is a homegrown local idea. Right now, it's a field full of possibility where an idea will come to life. We really believe it's going to be the future of quick serve. And so it's a totally new concept, new to the industry, new to Brooklyn Park. Uh, we're just super excited about it. President of Border Foods Aaron Engler says this idea capitalizes on a trend. Here's the thing. If you looked at the mix of drive through versus dining inside before, it was already skewed towards drive through in our industry. And with what's happened with the pandemic in the last year, that skewed even further over to drive through and, and getting in your what you want quickly. So a few local companies got together to figure out how to make the drive through process work better. Then we went and pitched it to Taco Bell. They loved it and here we are. Now now it's called Taco Bell Defy. And the project kicked off with a ceremonial groundbreaking on Monday. But how will it all work? This Taco Bell, actually the kitchen sits up on a second level and then it has essentially four kitchens in that large kitchen and each one of those kitchens delivers food to a different lane beneath. Three of those lanes are for people that pre-order food. One is for your typical uh, I'm going to go up to the menu and order food, and then we also have walk up and bike as well. That process is supposed to take the speed of service and cut it in half. Our charge was primarily taking that uh, kernel of an idea and making it buildable. What you won't see in the new renderings is a place to sit down and eat. There's actually no inside dining. There is a pedestrian or customer entrance and small vestibule lobby where you can walk in, place an order, 
wait for it and, and leave, but there's no dining inside or even on site in a patio or anything. One word of advice from the planners. When this project wraps up next summer, there could be a slight learning curve. But again, all that's already been put in motion with online ordering and apps that facilitate that for everything from food to groceries. This is just taking what's been happening and monopolizing on it and making it even better and making it better for the customers and making it better for our employees and just, just where the way we see the industry going. A Brooklyn Park manufacturer wants to expand and they're asking for funding from the state to help do so. Clear Edge, a filtration systems manufacturer, currently employs 54 people. The company hopes to nearly double its workforce in the next two years. The Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, under preliminary approval, is offering $125,000 to help Clear Edge expand its facilities. The money would be a fully forgivable loan if Clear Edge meets its job creation and retention goals. And Golden Valley is going retro by selling vintage t-shirts. We just decided as opposed to uh, storing these year after year after year, it's time to get rid of them. So we're having a, a $1 Park and Rec t-shirt sale here at Brookview. City officials tell us that people lined up outside of Brookview Golden Valley to pick up these vintage tees on the first day they opened up the sale. It's a chance to own a little Golden Valley history and they'll be on sale here until they're gone.